We had 2,755 people on the Forbes World's Billionaires list this year, which is a record number. We have 493 new billionaires um, in the past 12 months. Number we had only 178 newcomers last year amid the pandemic. So this is a huge jump. I mean, just the newcomers this year from China, which is 205, it's more than the newcomers from the entire world last year. The previous record was in 2015, where we had 290 newcomers. So huge increase um, of the 493. We were looking at how these people ended up on the list. Why are they new? And the majority of them was they already had companies that they'd founded or owned part of, and the stock just went up. We had IPOs, uh, and then there was a smaller number who um, landed on the list because of um, investing in cryptocurrency. Bitcoin hit you know record highs this year. One of the richest newcomers in Europe is Guillaume Poussaz of a company called Checkout.com that helps with online payments. I and mean, we also had in the United States, uh, Max Levchin um, from Affirm, a fintech company, new, newcomer. So we saw a few of those. Also the two founders of Klarna, which is um, a Swedish company, also a payments company. One of the, the youngest self-made women on the list is Whitney Wolf Hurd of the dating app Bumble. Bumble went public. Um, earlier this year, and she owns a big stake in the company, and she's worth $1.3 billion. The youngest self-made, new youngest self-made billionaire um, is a billionaire who got, who uh, dropped out of Stanford. His name is Austin Russell, he's 26, and he started a, a company that makes um, these automotive sensors. It's called Luminar Technologies for 3D vision for, for self-driving cars. And um, that went public in a SPAC merger, and he's worth $2.6 billion. China has 626 billionaires this year, and that's not including Hong Kong and Macau, which we uh, count separately. So if you include both territories, uh, it's 698. So it's just behind the U.S., which has 724. Um, and that's, that's a big increase, because last year, China only had 388 people uh, in the Shanghai market, in the Shenzhen market, um, there's a record amount of money raised on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2020. We have a couple new billionaires um, that are from vaping. Uh, so one is Kate Wang, who is one of the world's youngest self-made female billionaires, uh, 39. And she has a company called RLX Technology that produces e-cigarettes. And the other is Chen Jiping, who also runs a vaping company that's actually the biggest manufacturer of uh, vaping devices in the world. There's Stephen Meng Yang, who founded Anchor, which it sells uh, iPhone battery packs and uh, wall chargers and cables. And the other is Li Shen, who uh, founded two US listed companies, uh, one being electric vehicle ma maker Li Auto that just went public on the NASDAQ in 2020. And we have, uh, about 40 or more uh, billionaires who joined the list uh, because of uh, products they were producing during COVID. Uh, most of these are healthcare billionaires. So um, we have the CEO of Moderna, uh, uh, Stefan Bonsell, who, you know, obviously Moderna's stock has shot up because of uh, its vaccines. Uh, we also have the co-founder of uh, BioNTech, which partnered with Pfizer for Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Um, and we have a uh, an Italian newcomer um, named Sergio Stevanato, which uh, people may not recognize his name, uh, but he owns a company that uh, produces glass vials that COVID-19 vaccines are actually stored in. When you work on the list and, and you see how the stock market was uh, doing the past year, we did, we were always expecting a high number of billionaires this year, but it, it always does surprise you when you sit down and see how many there really were and, and just, I think the one thing that was really surprising was just the breadth of where everyone comes from. You know, there are people who are made money from biotech and healthcare, which we expected, but it's also, you know, things like crypto because um, Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies have gone up so much. You know, we have uh, the Winkle Boss twins um, who invested in Bitcoin in 2012 at $12 per coin, and now it's $58,000 per coin. And then we have, you know, SPAC IPOs where uh, you have both SPAC sponsors who created these SPAC, uh, blank check companies becoming billionaires. And then you have tech company founders who became billionaires because they merged their 
um, company with SPACs. And, you know, we're seeing fintech um, taking off with a lot of people doing at home trades. Um, and, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, obviously a lot of tech companies taking off, electric vehicle companies taking off. And so really across the board, um, it's just kind of a record breaking year.